Alrighty guys, Evan Aldo here. What is up? Uh, smash the like button if you enjoy the content. Content. Gonna get into you know Bitcoin, Ethereum, kind of a quick update, S&P 500, DXY as well. Um, and check out if you guys are interested, new free crypto DCA course down below. Also check out the Aldo Empire, one week free trial down below as well. So let's get into it. And you know basically right now, for time, you know, for people who just want to know what I'm looking at in the short term, time constrained, we'll get into kind of the short term stuff first here. And I mean, right now you're looking at the four hour, you were flashing a blood diamond on and off. Now it's flashing on again, 22 bolt bear um, here, just a 15 bear. So a little bit of fluctuation between high Kanashi candles and regular candles. This does confirm in two hours and 40 minutes. Sometimes these could just pump up out of nowhere and be a giant, you know, kind of uh, bear trap. Um, however, what I think will probably happen, given money flow is coming down, given we had you know a fierce rejection from um, basically our 200 weekly moving average around 28k, also the spider line. Given that that happened, things are a bit more bearish in my opinion um, right now. So my guess is most likely you will come down far farther, which is why I have a pretty good short in. Um, right now, if you guys want more info on that, like I mentioned, Aldo Empire VIP Discord down below. So, um, basically, you know, when I look at this, you know, yesterday in the video, I was telling you we'd probably jump up to, you know, jump up a little bit higher, mess with this point, and got that one right, exactly what we did. I was talking about potentially, you know, if we could break above and hold this point, 29K, 30K. So far, it's looking like that's probably not going to happen unless something changes here, unless we could bounce here, which when I look at lower time frames, eh, not looking too strong. I mean, you do have potentially a trigger wave right here in the 22 minute, but usually when you get to these lower time frames, typically the money flow crossovers are a little bit stronger than kind of trigger waves developing. And you also want to look at that combined with kind of how your four hour looks, kind of how some of these larger time frames look. And you are printing, um, or were you? Yeah. You are printing red dots on some of these. Not a bullet, not a bearish dip in your eight hour, but you do have, you know, that uh, that kind of bear, you know, that red dot printing as well in your 16. Um, you do have a 16 bull still on the 20 hour. Eh, you could you could potentially print a bear dip pretty soon on the 20 hour. So just keep that in mind. Then if you look at regular candles here, um, it is a red, you know, red so far. So that's what we're looking at right there now. Main bullish case, in my opinion, right now is going to be kind of you got some decent curvature, money flow crossover, and green dot on the daily. The only thing weak about this is this VWAP has been above the zero line for a while, so they could just this could just turn over and come down, especially with these RSIs that are a bit gapped here. So keep that in mind. In mind, um, I'm thinking right now if we do, if we are able to jump up higher, you know, 29k is the potential point that we may see. Um, you also go to spiral line at 28.5, but I think we really want to, we want to hold 28. We want to hold that 200 weekly moving average before we could talk about, you know, potentially coming up higher. And right now, if you look at this, Bitcoin does seem to be falling down a bit more for YLX is on the, the four minutes. So maybe we could bounce a little bit here. Let's draw a local FIB level just to see. So you are hitting a local FIB level right there. Um, what I was liking was, um, you know, the DBSI moving average on the two hour here potentially to kind of come and test this point that I'm looking at. Um, if we do come down farther, if we do lose that area, you also have our printing a bear div on the two hour that confirms in 40 minutes here, 16 bear on the DBSI. So that is kind of what I'm looking at right there for potential short. And by the way, guys, if you guys are interested in uh, making any trades, if you guys know how to trade, if you know what you're doing, check out um, the link down below to Fairdesk or MEXC down below. Those are really good. I mean, the four exchanges down below are the best I think to use right now, especially with the K where you don't need KYC, where you don't need a VPN if you're in a restricted area. Um, Fairdesk, we do a $100, $100 giveaway every week and announce that in the Discord. So check it out only with my link. MEXC, similar thing, except it's a $200 giveaway. MEXC, you do have to deposit um, instead of the minimum of a dollar, I believe on Fairdesk, you do have to deposit a minimum of $100. But the the bonus is bigger. Um, like I said, we always announce them. So it is you guys got really good odds of getting those. And uh, yeah, so check those out if you guys are interested, if you know how to trade, if you know what you're doing. So yeah. And ultimately, that's that for Bitcoin right now. Um, that's kind of what I'm looking at. If we look at the kind of the macro a tiny bit here. I mean, we're still kind of in line with my prediction that I've drawn out months ago, you know, 31k being the top, you know, regardless of whether we do come up to 
you know, do you come up to test 30 again or 29 again? I do think you're generally going to come down farther into the end of the year. Um, we'll talk about the S&P 500 for in this just a second, but that doesn't look too good, you know, as well. You do have a green dot in the monthly. I mean, if this does confirm in 26 days, maybe we could reevaluate if we're above 30k or whatever. But we'll we'll talk about that when when the time comes. VWAP is coming up on the the three week, but eh, I think that's going to curve back down and go deeper. You know, I, I don't think we're. It's looking so far like this is a pretty fierce rejection from the 200 weekly moving average. Uh, you know that we don't want to. You know, it seems like price doesn't want to be there. I do have the 200 right here that you could see. 28k essentially it seems like price doesn't want to be there you know that's a pretty fierce rejection on the weekly we want to close a weekly above that place to to remain more more bullish and we couldn't do it right there also does not say we've got three days to do it here it doesn't seem like you know my guess is that we won't but you know anything could happen obviously moving on to ethereum a bit this has been bleeding a lot against bitcoin you know we're down about 30 percent over the last year since last september 31 percent doesn't looks like it wants to keep coming down especially with the yellow x so in terms of trading right now if you're going to be going long you know, i would say bitcoin is the number one thing to do it with if you're going to be going short probably take eth because eth is going to just keep seems to be keep you know keeping bleeding against bitcoin right now and if you look at the two week as well this is the big thing which i'm hoping we rip the band-aid off and just do something like see this money flow right here if we can just do something quick i mean i don't think it's gonna be this catastrophic but if we could come down quickly from where we are to some level like this, that's going to be huge. I don't know if it's going to be that low, but you know, see what see what happens. I mean, I think it's going to be kind of a no brainer when you get kind of a if you get another deep kind of anchor wave here in the next couple of months by the end of the year or the next year. That's probably going to be the place where ETH bottoms out against Bitcoin. And that's going to be a really really good buying opportunity to potentially um, kind of get in here, potentially get in. So that's what I'm ultimately looking at for ETH versus Bitcoin. Now, if we look at ETH um, in the kind of short term. Your 20 hours is interesting. If VWAP could come up, give us a nice little trigger wave, bring us up potentially. You're hitting, this is just a, you know, kind of place where price kind of likes to stick to that I drew this line at around, you know, 607. Getting a little bit of a bounce off of that. We'll see if we could kind of hold this. Money flow is still deep on the two hour. Not looking too promising there. But if you look at some of these lower time frames, yeah, you could be forming a bull div on your, you know, 20 minute, maybe your 16 minute will give you that pretty soon. 10 minute, we did confirm a bull div. So, Short term, you could see a potential jump off of this area. Um, that's something to keep in mind. I don't think we're too strong where I would be inclined to go long um, just yet. Um, you also got an 18 bear on the four hour. I mean, that's kind of a high bear on the DBSI right there. So I would be careful. Um, if we are to kind of break upward out of this interesting, you know, kind of reverse head and shoulder type thing um, right here, Potentially, you can make a higher high, you know, scare away a lot of the shorts, 1763. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll keep an eye on this. Um, and then Bitcoin dominance as well. Quickly, you know, to reaffirm, you know, ETH bleeding against Bitcoin. Most of these altcoins bleeding against Bitcoin. Money flow looks good in the weekly. Um, your technical target out of this kind of breakout, I think we could jump up to 52 pretty quickly, especially if price continues to go down here. I think that this will jump up throughout that. Where could this end up? I mean, we do have a technical target all the way up, you know, like I've been mentioning, all the way up at around 58, 59. I think you're at least going to make it up to, I don't know, 55 here or something like that. And I think that's going to be a good place to start DCing into all coins. Hopefully this, you know, if we do see a bigger drop down, if October and November turn out to be very red months, we could see this quickly. We could see this quickly. So I think it's going to be more of an interesting time. I think a lot of people are apathetic on crypto at the moment. I think some new faces may kind of come back may kind of come in if we do see a drop down for bitcoin within the next month we've been pretty sideways here so kind of due for you know some more action now s&p 500 we were talking about yesterday i was talking about yesterday bull divs on kind of your, your four hour your five hour but i did mention that sometimes in a bearish you know situation these don't play out too much and the vwap just comes down money flow comes deeper so right now these are looking like they want to potentially come deeper now you do have also, this is another thing, you do have a bull div right here in your 16 hour, which could potentially bring you up a bit, but your money flow is still pretty deep here and it looks like the trajectory wants to come deeper and you have a yellow X. So that's my concern a bit right here. You're getting yellow X's, you're getting stuff like that. Daily looks like it wants to come deeper as well. So I do think you may generally continue downward here. Um, I think, you know, this is gonna generally kind of follow what Bitcoin does 
for the most part into the end of the year. And then I think we'll break away sometime next year where Bitcoin really starts to outperform the S&P 500. It typically does bottom before the S&P 500 as well. So potentially maybe we see Bitcoin bottom at the end of this year, maybe even in November, and the S&P 500 does not bottom until the beginning of next year. Something like that could absolutely be possible here. Um, moving on to the DXY, not showing too many signs of slowing down. I mean, still monthly, still looking powerful. Two week money flow is still pretty good. Weekly coming down with the money flow gap to RSI, but eh, maybe this could just come right up. I mean, it looks like it doesn't want to come into the red here. And then when you look at some of these time frames, two day and three day money flow is still pretty strong. Same thing here. You got a bearish dip in the daily, but money flow is still pretty strong. Maybe the next once that uh, view up just curves around, we'll see more power um, in the dollar going forward. A bit more power here, so. Yeah, I mean, that trigger wave, I think on the this trigger wave too on the five hour could probably be the next catalyst to bring us more and more upward. Um, you know, you are breaking structure a little bit here, but eh, I think we I think we got some more, you know, more life left in us, even if we do come down a little bit more here. I think your Dixie is going to come up a bit more. Um, <laughs> and ultimately, if we look at, you know, the uh, 30 year government bonds yield right here, very strong still similar to the Dixie. I mean, there's a few things that are showing some weakness, maybe some of you have bear Dave and money flow coming out here, but eh, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of want a, you know, for the people trying to buy a, buy property right now, I could kind of want this to come down, but I think we generally could kind of come up a bit more. There's a big place of fib level or something at 5.5, which I think we probably will hit by the end of year for this. And that potentially could be the peak for this. And the fed could start to pivot. I think, um, that's ultimately what I'm looking at. And I think what's a good indication the Fed may be more inclined to pivot is you're, you're seeing deflationary signs a little bit, especially on oil right here, um, because oil did come down a bit. Um, it's kind of looking like it doesn't want to come a higher, um, you know, with the red dot on the, the weekly right there. And then money flow coming down right here. Now, we could form the trigger wave, you know, similar to this area, bring us right back up for um, oil here. Keep that in mind. Same thing with the 16 hour. But we've definitely broken structure a bit here. And I think this is enough where the Fed is starting to think, oh, maybe we could be headed, headed to a deflationary time. It was also looking at Exxon Mobil, you know, this kind of um, one, two, three, four tops. We are rejecting from that area, that channel coming down a bit. Maybe, like I said, maybe we will get one of these trigger waves that brings us up, comes up higher. But right now, I, you know, it does, is looking a little bit more bearish on the weekly. We'll keep an eye on this. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on this. Um, you know, for the sake of the Fed pivoting and all that, we hope things get more more deflationary here. Anyway, guys, if you guys are interested in my trading course or the free crypto DCA course, check out the link down below. Um, check that out. Also check out the exchanges. A lot of really good promos that you could only find here in the Aldo Empire VIP Discord. Me, Lanacor, CBZ, KMAC, all do amazing there. Some one we are I do have some time for some one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, that's on the website as well. The link for that link down below for that as well. A lot of people have loved the sessions with um, Lanicorn and CBZ. You could see in the free area of the discord. There's a testimonials area where they wrote some nice testimonials about that about them. So shout out to CBZ and Lanicor for helping people out. Prices are really reasonable. So yeah, check that out guys. Really appreciate you guys. You guys, you know, we're sticking through the, the bear market. You know, I think we just got to make it to the happening kind of you know, survive the, the rest of this year. It may be a little tough, but we'll make it. Um, so anyway, guys, subscribe, like the video.